What's up guys, I'm BTC. Today I'm going to show you everything you need to know to start playing Apex Legends and hit the ground running. Apex Legends is a battle royale game where everyone starts with no equipment and you must find it throughout the map. During the match, a damage zone forces all players towards one part of the map and the squads are in a group of three players and every hero has different special abilities. The very first thing you want to do after loading up the game is go into the configuration options. The default sensitivity is pretty high so you're going to want to turn that down a bit. Also take a few minutes to look at all the different bindings and make whatever changes are necessary. Quick little side note, I use a very unique keyboard setup so don't try to copy what I use for key bindings it'll put you in a bad place let's take a quick look at the different characters which are known as legends every team can only have one of each legend and there's no perfect composition however some of the characters do have nice synergies that work with each other now every character has a passive a tactical and an ultimate ability the first legend is Bloodhound. The passive is Tracker. This allows you to see little indicators on the map that let you know that an enemy has been in the area. The tactical is Eye of the Allfather. This is kind of like a radar or a sonar where it goes out and it tells you where all the enemies and other stuff is. However, it doesn't update during the duration. So where they first show up is not necessarily where they're going to be if the enemy has moved. Also, keep in mind that the enemy can see when you use this ability. The ultimate is Beast of the Hunt. This allows you to move significantly faster, and you can also see the tracks of where enemies have moved, and it gives you complete x-ray vision of all enemies in the area. The next legend is Gibraltar. He's what you would effectively call a main tank of all the legends. His passive is a gun shield aiming down the sights, deploys a gun shield that blocks incoming fire. His tactical ability is the dome of protection, throw down a dome shield that blocks all attacks for 15 seconds. And the ultimate is defensive bombardment, call in a concentrated mortar strike on a position you mark with your smoke. Now just because this character is classified as a tank doesn't mean he does less damage than any of the other characters who are offensive. They can all use the same weapons, they all do the same damage. The classification comes from what their special abilities are, and for his, they're more focused on defensive, keeping your team alive. The tactical, the dome of protection, is really good whenever you're trying to revive a teammate because it allows you to block all of that incoming fire and you can just revive them in relative security. The next legend is Lifeline. She's the closest thing to a dedicated support in this game. It's not required that you have her on your squad, but it's an incredibly good idea too. So her passive is Combat Medic, revive knockdown teammates faster while protected by a shield wall. That is incredibly powerful, and healing items are used 25% faster, also very good. Her tactical is the healing drone. The drone will automatically heal anybody that's nearby. That's also quite good because it allows you to get healed during fights instead of having to worry about using the syringes and the med kits. And her ultimate, the care package, Colin dropped full of high quality defensive gear. So this is less useful towards the end of the match, but incredibly powerful in the beginning. So if you find any of the abilities that give you ultimate charge, they're called ultimate accelerants, we'll go more about that later, then you want to always give these to Lifeline at the beginning because you want her to call in that ultimate as fast as possible and it gives your squad a nice little edge right at the beginning of the match. The next legend is Pathfinder. His passive is Insider Knowledge. Scan a survey beacon to reveal the ring's next location. These survey beacons are throughout the entire map. It's pretty easy to find them. However, the effectiveness of this ability is kind of debatable. His tactical ability is Grappling Hook. You can throw a grapple and then you can swing around or pull yourself up. It's very similar to Widowmaker's Grapple from Overwatch. However, it has a lot better physics so you can use it to do more interesting stuff. The ultimate is the zipline gun. This allows you to set up two different points and your team can quickly move from one spot to the next. The next legend is Wraith. This is generally considered one of the strongest characters in the game. The passive is Voices from the Void. This gives you a sound alert whenever an enemy comes nearby. The tactical is Into the Void, which allows you to run through the void, avoiding all damage. However, when you're running through the void, you're going to see little images of players. Those aren't real. They're not actually representing. It's just kind of extra special effects. So if you see a little red character in the void, don't think that it's a real player because it's not. And then the ultimate is the 
dimensional rift. What you do is you open a portal and then you run as far as you can and then you can open a second portal. You and your teammates can then quickly go through to instantly appear on the other side. The next legend is Bangalore, also one of the stronger characters in the game. The passive is double time. Whenever you take damage while sprinting, you move even faster, which is just great because it allows you to get into cover. The tactical is smoke launcher, which is probably one of the best abilities in the entire game. You smoke off an entire area and neither you nor the enemies can see through it, so it's great for looting, it's great for reviving teammates, or just backing away, retreating, and finding a different position. This is easily one of the best abilities in the game. And the ultimate is Rolling Thunder, where you call in an artillery strike that slowly creeps across the landscape. Also, this is an incredibly powerful ability. It allows you to do a lot of damage and to get people that are hiding on top of high ground or that are behind cover or any that sort of thing. Bangalore, easily one of the best characters in the game. The next legend is Caustic. He's classified as a tank, but he has no protection abilities at all. He's more about area control. His passive is Nox Vision, which allows you to see through the Nox gas and also gives you a threat indicator on the enemies that are moving through it. His tactical is the Nox Gas Trap. You place these canisters throughout the map. You want to put them in places where you know the enemies are going to have to go by. You can then detonate them by attacking them or they get triggered by enemies moving. And then the gas itself will prevent vision for the enemies and your teammates. Only Caustic can see through the gas itself and it also deals damage. His ultimate is the Nox Gas Grenade, which just blankets a very large area in that same gas. Once more, he can see through it, but no one else can. The last legend is Mirage. His passive is Encore. Automatically drop a decoy and cloak for 5 seconds when knocked down. If the enemy is far away, this is great because it allows you to move to cover unseen. However, if they're up close, this passive is completely useless. The tactical ability is Psych Out where you send a holographic decoy to confuse the enemy. If they're already attacking you, then this isn't going to do anything. The best use of this ability is to send it out at random intervals because if an enemy sees it, they might be tempted to attack it, which gives away their position. And then the ultimate is Vanishing Act. Mirage deploys a team of decoys to distract enemies while he cloaks. This is just a last ditch effort in order to kind of escape whatever situation that's kind of gone wrong. Now we're ready to get into a match and from the very start you need to react quickly. This is what the map looks like. On the bottom right hand side is the map features. Where you start is going to change every single game. This line with the arrows indicates where you start and the direction of the dropship that's carrying you and all the other players. Some important features to point out is the hot zone. This is where you can find significantly better equipment. This also means that a lot of players are going to try to go there, making it quite dangerous. Another good location for resources is the supply ship. This starts flying through the air and will eventually stop at the designated location marker with the blue outline. You can land on this while it's still traveling through the air, but once more, a lot of players will likely try to do this, so be aware. As soon as the match starts, you need to open up your map and quickly find these things and make a plan where you want to go with your team. If you're the jump master, you control where your team is going, but your teammates can ping locations on the map to make suggestions. Or you can relinquish the jump master and let someone else do it. It's not necessary to jump immediately, but the longer you wait, the harder it's going to be to find equipment and locations that haven't already been looted. After the jump master launches you out, you can gain control of your own character by holding the specified hotkey. While you want to stay with your team for most of the jump, it's a good idea to break off towards the end so that you can have at least a little bit of distance between you and your teammates and search different buildings. But you still need to stay relatively close to your teammates in case there's danger. While falling, you want to keep your speed as high as possible and beat the enemy squads to the locations and get the equipment first. Being even a few seconds late might end your match real fast. When dropping, you want to keep an eye out for buildings or supply crates to find the best equipment. When you first start out, just grab anything you can find. It's extremely important that you and your team get geared up as quickly as possible in case there's enemy in the area. You can't afford to waste time being picky about what weapons you use. Now let's look at the different equipment that you can find. There's a wide variety of weapons that you can use. Short range, long range, single shot, and rapid fire. You can practice with these in the training map to find which ones you like, and more importantly, to get accustomed to the different way that they all fire. Some of them are more powerful than others, and I'll cover that in another video, but for now, you should just get familiar with all of them. There are four basic types of ammo, light, heavy, shells, and energy. Each weapon uses a specific type of ammo. This can be seen on the bottom right hand corner and both the weapons and the ammo are color coded making it fairly easy to tell at a glance what you need to use. 
If you have ammo in your inventory that is not used by one of the weapons that you have, then there will be a red circle with a slash. Additionally, there are certain legendary weapons in the game that use their own special type of ammo that cannot be replaced. The quality of equipment is broken into four categories, common, rare, epic, and legendary. As the equipment quality goes up, the item will provide more damage, stats, or special effects. If you currently have a lower quality version of something equipped and you find something new, picking up the new item will automatically replace what you had previously. Additionally, you can move things around in your inventory or drop them on the ground to clear up space. There are four types of primary equipment, the helmet, body shield, knockdown shield, and backpack. The helmet reduces damage from headshots, the body shield provides you with additional health, the knockdown shield gives you defenses after you get knocked down, and the backpack increases the size of your available inventory. This is what a completely empty inventory looks like. A common backpack will add two slots, a rare backpack will add four, and an epic and legendary backpacks will provide an additional six slots. In addition to the weapons and equipment, there are also quite a few consumables. There's a small and a large version of the health pack and a small and a large version of the shield recharge. The Phoenix Kit will recover a massive amount of both health and shields, and the Ultimate Accelerant provides you with a 20% boost to your ultimate charge. There are also throwables that include the Frag, Thermite, and Arc Star. The Frag deals damage in an area, Thermite creates a patch of fire, and the Arc Star sticks to whatever it hits and then explodes a few seconds later. These are good at the start of a fight or when you don't have a direct line of sight to the enemy. The last of the items to cover are attachments. These are specialized items that increase the strength of your weapons. There's a large variety in them and they do things like increasing your total ammo capacity, increasing the rate of fire, and providing zoom magnification with the scope. I'm not going to go through every single attachment in this video as it's just a starter guide to Apex Legends, but for the most part, when you start out this game, just grab any attachment that you can in order to provide a boost to your weapon. When you pick up an attachment, if it can be placed on one of your weapons, it will automatically be applied. If the attachment cannot be used on your weapons, it will be placed in your inventory with the same circle with a slash that the ammo has. If you find something good for a weapon that you don't have, make sure to let your teammates know and give it to them. In Apex Legends, there's an incredibly useful ping system. You can use it on most everything in the game to tell your team important information. You can ping different sections of the map to let your team know that you want to go there. You can ping your weapon to tell them that you need ammo. You can ping an empty equipment or attachment slot to tell your team that you need one. You can ping equipment on the ground to tell your team where it is. Or you can use it on enemies to let your team know where they are. The ping system is incredibly powerful and you should be using it almost all the time. One of the most important things for movement is mastering sprint sliding. You nearly always want to use sprint going from one place to the next, and you can increase your speed even more, particularly downhill, by using the slide. Even over flat surfaces, you can sprint, then slide, and then jump at the end of the slide to keep your momentum and continue moving forward. It will take a little practice, but this movement technique is an absolute must to know. During the match, the area is going to start to shrink and it will be surrounded by a damage zone on the outside. This forces all the players into a confined area. When in combat, make sure to use cover as much as possible. Take the high ground to give yourself an advantage and try to never stand still. When a player loses all of his health, they get put into a knockdown phase. The player can still move around and use a knockdown shield if you have one, but you're going to be unable to attack. A teammate can revive a knockdown player, but it takes several seconds and both players are quite vulnerable at that time. A player is eliminated when they get into the knockdown phase and then lose all of their health. When their health runs out this time, they will drop a container with all of their equipment that the enemy can pick up. However, that player is not completely out of the game yet. If a teammate grabs their banner out of the container, they can then use it at a respawn point to bring that player back into the fight. Let's talk about strategy and how to win. There's a certain snowball effect in Apex Legends. The more gear you get, the easier it is to win fights. And one of the best ways to get more gear is to go and look for fights. Taking out an enemy squad will provide your team with a substantial boost, but make sure that your team has some variety in your weapons. It's generally a good idea to have some close range and some long range. Make sure that your team stays together. You don't have to be right next to each other, but if one of you gets engaged by the enemy, the rest of your team needs to be able to provide support very quickly. And don't try to save too much of your consumables. If you have it, then use it. And make sure that you're sharing health and shield packs with your teammates who might need them. 
I'm working on some more advanced guides that will go into details on weapons, classes, and strategy, so keep an eye out for those. In the meantime, you should now be ready to jump into Apex Legends. Good luck. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to see more, subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Also, come hang out in my Discord server and my Twitch live stream. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you'd like to see what kind of cool VIP rewards you can get, check the links down below. And remember, always, always blame the controller, because it's never your fault.